Hello, here's a Congress and King's table all laid out. It's not easy to see the dots, that's partially deliberate. Each zone is like a brick shape. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six zones in width, and one, two, three, four, five zones in depth. The reason it's wide is to give an army space to deploy and to make sure the left flank operates on the left, the right flank operates on the right, and the centre operates in the centre. You can move across, but by the time the armies meet, which is actually quite soon, there isn't time to redeploy your whole army. So deployment does matter. Now the scenery is laid out in the following way. Each player chooses three pieces. There's the battle sheet here. And there's the choices. You can either have a, up to one wood, up to one village, up to one rough hill, up to two gentle hills, up to one rough ground, up to one heavily obstructed. Now, the two players here, I've just made them up, obviously. One player has chosen a gentle hill, a rough hill, because it's got nice rough corky bits on it, and a piece of rough ground, a bit marshy there. The other player has chosen a village, a wood, nice little trees, and also another gentle hill. Because Conquerors and Kings operates in zones, you can have your cloth laid out with any size zones. These particular zones for 15mm battles are 10 inches by 5 inches. Um, no, 10 inches by 6 inches. Yeah, they're brick shaped. You can make the zones bigger or smaller because everything in the game is measured in zones. So a range of 1 is 1 zone. Movement of 2 is 2 zones. Now here's how the layout goes. The attackers over here on the right, they take a first piece put in the corner. Uh, this whole pile of a pool of scenery. So Gentle Hill going to put in this corner here. Now Defender takes a piece, um, they're going to take the rough ground and put in that corner. All the first four pieces must be in corners, because in most ancient battles the scenery was more peripheral. The attacker then chooses the, um, yeah, the rough hill and puts in that corner. The Defender chooses the wood and puts it in the corner. Once the four corners are full up, next pieces can be touching existing pieces. So the attacker takes the village and decides to put it there. And defender with the gentle hill puts it um, there. Now, that's only the initial layout.
Just have a look at some of these pieces in detail, see how they're made. This is a gentle hill. It's got a nice surface on it, a few little odd tufts and rocks may look nice. It's built on a piece of plywood with some foam covered in some covering. That's a gentle hill. A village is an ordinary template, like so, and the building's just placed loosely on it so it can be moved around to let troops move here and there. Now rough ground could be um, boggy, marshy. This is just to look nice on the tabletop with some wet bits which shine. This game is all about making it look nice so the game looks pleasant and enjoyable to play. Now the rough hill right at the far end This is made using some bits of cork bark, which are easy to buy, used from reptile shops. Bits of cork in there, so it looks like it's challenging. In Kongs and Kings, that's bad news for cavalry. Elephants can't go up there, chariots can't go up there, and close order infantry have all sorts of troubles manoeuvring over it as well. And once again, it's quite strong, little tufts of grass, little rocks, it's just to look attractive. People should make their own scenery, I think, make things look nice. The irregular look looks much better than just a simple uh, lollipop type hill. They're the scenery pieces.